and hello YouTube, GS Mammoth Smart here, and in today's video we're teaching you how to place images, resize images, and format images in Adobe InDesign. So if you happen to be new to the program, this should help you out. That's coming up next. What's up guys, GS Mammoth Smart here. Today another brand new video for tutorials with GS. Thanks for stopping by. Glad to have you here for another video. If you haven't been new to the channel, new to any of my videos, I encourage you to subscribe to our channel. Plenty of other tutorials regarding Adobe products such as Photoshop, InDesign, Premiere Pro, After Effects. We even have tutorials on some of the free programs such as Audacity and GIMP. So if you're interested in software, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as that post notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the most recent videos. So in today's tutorial, we're going to be working in Adobe InDesign and showing you how to basically work with images, how to import them, place them, format them, resize them, and what all the tools do. So you can create some great magazines, books, or whatever type of document you're creating in InDesign. So the first thing we're going to do is create a new document here. So we're going to go ahead and create three pages. So in pages, we're going to click three. If you want to make custom size adjustments, you can. Otherwise, by default, it'll probably go to the size of regular paper. Then we're going to press create at the bottom, and this will give you uh, three pages you can work on. So if you want to add images to InDesign, it's actually very easy. I have a folder here on my desktop called InDesign Tutorial where I have several images. Now, just like in every other program, you can very easily just highlight or click one image and then Alt-Tab back over and drag it in just like that. And that works just fine. However, if you want more control over placing images in InDesign, then you'll have to go through the file menu, which is generally what people would do. So if you go up to file here, go to place, and you can navigate to your folder here. You'll see several options down here at the bottom. Show import options. This is mainly only if you're trying to import something like a Photoshop file or an Illustrator file with many layers. Replace selected item. That's if you have something selected already on your board here, which I'll go over in just a second. So you don't need to worry about any of this for right now. We're going to go and uncheck mark this because we have nothing selected anyway. And we can go ahead and select one picture that we might want to import. Now, as you can see, the same thing happens when we would have dragged something in but you'll see a preview of your image here. Now there are two things that you can do when importing an image. You can just click it and it will basically give you the full size of your image. So if your image is 1920 by 1080, it will be pasted, it will be placed into InDesign as a 1920 by 1080. As you can see, this actually fits really well on this page. However, if you don't want to do that, if you want to create your own size, then when you go back to importing your image, I just press Control Z twice or Command Z on the Mac, which will undo everything. You can easily just create one of your own boxes as well, whatever size you want, by just dragging your cursor, holding down and dragging, and then letting go. And as you can see, that will create an image based on the size that you have specified with, with your mouse. And it's very easy to do that with all other images. So those are the two basic ways to place an image in a document by clicking or by dragging and letting go. Now, one thing you'll notice is that sometimes your picture may not look as high quality as the actual picture does. And if you run into a problem like that, if you feel like it's pixelated, especially if you're working with smaller images, it might get really pixelated. It might look like the image is smudged. It's not really smudged. The reason why is because you're working on a low performance preview mode. If you head up to the view menu up here, and then go down to display deformance, you'll see that there's a high quality display option. If you check mark this, this image becomes a lot clearer. And with smaller images, they actually become a lot less pixelated. So if you happen to need a high quality preview, head to the view menu and make sure you click high quality display. Be aware this does take more memory in your computer. So if you don't have a ton of memory, this might slow your workflow down if you don't have a high powered computer. So now that we went over that, we can go ahead and delete this because I want to show a few of the things with these images. If you like to create your frames where you want your pictures to stand beforehand, before you place them in, you can very much so do that. You can use your rectangular frame tool right here. You can create shapes and boxes of the size of image that you want to create. So right here, I've dragged and created a box. I can now use my black arrow key tool here, and I can just put it in a specific spot. I can continue to do this and just create as many boxes as I want. I can even copy and paste these boxes as well. So if I want to have a copy of this box, 
I can control C, control V or command C and command V on a Mac, and I can copy and paste these boxes. So if I have a layout now of images like this, and I say, okay, this is my layout for my page. Now I wanna start putting images in. You can very easily do that. So if I go to place now, go to file again, and I go to place, you can actually drop your images into these areas. So I'm gonna go ahead and select three images this time because I have three boxes here. I'm gonna go ahead and press open. As you can see, there's a three marked on my images here. And if I actually use my left and right arrow keys, I can actually scroll through and cycle through these images. Now the cool thing is I can either, like before, we could obviously always drag like that or we could place it. However, if we go ahead and drop it onto a frame here, it'll get placed into the frame just like that. Now you'll see that this is actually uh, only showing a part of the image. And the reason why this is showing only a part of the image is because the image is too big. Now there are several ways that you can fix this. For one, you can do it manually. And if you go ahead and go to the center of the image here, you see this little circle here. If you click on this circle here, you'll see the actual frame of your image, which is this red outline here. If you go ahead and resize this, you can resize it and as you can see the image gets smaller within your frame and you can basically make it the size that you want so that it fits within your frame. So like that, as you can see, now we see both the chairs in this frame. The other thing you can do is if you don't wanna do it manually like this, let's go ahead and control Z all the way back. This is a large size. You can go up to object, you can go to fitting and you have two options here. You can click fit frame proportionally or fit content proportionally. If you click fit frame proportionally, this image will get scaled down until it fits your frame. The content of this image will not all be in this frame, but it will fit the frame and scale down as much as it can so that you have the most amount of content in this frame. What you can also do is fit content proportionally. So click fitting fit content proportionally, and this will get the entire image in this frame and fit it proportionally to this frame so that everything in the image is shown. Sometimes fit content proportionally will work really well, other times fit frame proportionally will work really well too. And if you don't like either of those options, like I said, you could just very easily uh, do your own resizing here. Now when you're resizing, if you wanna keep the aspect ratio the same and keep the proportions the same, you wanna make sure that when you grab the endpoints here, the anchor points here to resize, you hold down the shift key and then it will resize proportionally. As you can see, as we're dragging this up and down, the top and the right, everything gets resized proportionally. If you don't hold shift down, as you can see, you can freely resize, but you can actually uh, distort it and stretch it. And if you don't wanna stretch it and distort your image, then you'll have to hold down shift while you are resizing and that way your aspect ratio stays the same. However, this isn't the only thing you can do with images. Let's go ahead and erase these things right here. You can also create shapes of your own. If you wanted to create a rectangular shape or an ellipse shape, you can grab your ellipse tool. You can create a circle like that. And very similarly, and this is a great time to show you now the uh, select the uh, replace selected option. So if I have something selected here, if I have the circle selected and if I go to file and if I go to place again, and if I select an image and make sure I have replace selected item check marked, as you can see, it'll replace it, it'll replace whatever object or image I have selected. Similarly, if there's an image already in this area, if I go to place again, I wanna replace this image, for example, I can click another image and because I have a check mark here, replace selected item, I can click open and it'll replace that image. And we can go to object fitting, fit frame proportionally. And as you can see, this looks really nice. Now, if you wanna move this picture around, say you want the plane to be more in the center, we can once again, click the center of this and this will give us the actual size of the photo. Now, not only can you resize in this way, but you can also move it. So as you can see, we can move it like that. You can also use your arrow keys on your keyboard if you wanna have more fine movements. So very easy to work with images here, as long as you know the difference between uh, clicking the image on the, uh, on the sides. If you click the center, it will turn into that. So if you don't want to mess around with the image moving in your frame. If you only wanna move the image, if you wanna move this entire frame, 
if you want to move the image around your document, make sure you click somewhere on the sides. Cause if you click in the center, you'll be actually moving the image inside the frame. You won't be moving the entire photo frame. So that's one thing to be aware about when you're moving images around your document, you want to click on the sides, the center will select inside the frame. But that isn't the only thing you can do either. If you want to create your own custom shapes, we can use the pen tool here and we can just create a crazy shape. So maybe something like that. We connect the dots. Then because we have the selected already, we go file, we go place. We make sure we have replace selected item check marked and we can go ahead and click another image and that'll get placed into that area. If we want to move it around now, we go to our black arrow, click the center, and we can move it around if we want to do so. If you want to size it a bit up, we can go ahead and hold down shift, scale it up a bit, and there we go. It's also important to notice that you do have two arrow keys here. You have the black arrow, which will allow you to move the image. And if you click your white arrow, no matter where you click on your image, not just the center now, but anywhere you click on your image, you'll be able to move that. So the white arrow is pretty much accessible through the black arrow as well, but only in the center of the image here. And if you have any other shapes that you might create in Photoshop or you might create an illustrator, if you see some type of octagon in Google images, you could very easily just drag that octagon or, or drag some type of shape you drew out in illustrator or Photoshop, drag it in here. And very similarly, as we do with the pen tool, you can just drop the image into that shape. So it's also very well integrated with all the other Adobe products as well. And the last thing I want to go over is importing and placing multiple images. If you have several images that you want to add, you can add them all at once. We can go to place again and we can highlight all of these. If you want to cycle through our images, we can cycle through all of them and we can place them all one after the other. If we wanted to do it like that, we can create several boxes for them just like that. And as you can see, we can place them like that. Or if you wanted to actually create a sort of grid where all images get placed all at once with the same uh, size of frame, we can hold down the control and the shift key. And then when we drag out, as you can see, we create this cool little grid. Let's actually make it the size of this page here. And if we let go, as you can see, all the images get placed in as a grid. So that can be sometimes useful, especially if your images are the same size, then you'll basically have the same amount of space between them. They'll be the same. They'll have the same frame. Uh, if you're working with different sized images though, it can get a bit messy. So I wouldn't recommend doing that, but there is a way to do it. If you want to import multiple images at once in a grid fashion, this is how you do it in a grid fashion by holding control and shift. And that pretty much sums up the video. That's how you place images through the, through the place item in the file menu how you can use some of the tools here to create photo frames and to resize photos and to move photos around. Hopefully you found the tutorial helpful. If you did, go ahead and leave a like on the video. Any questions or comments, confusions you might have, even feedback that you might have. If you know if you know how to do something really cool, if you know how to do something even better than I should in this tutorial, go ahead and let me know in the comment section. We're all here to learn. And go ahead and check that comment section because there might be some useful and helpful stuff in the comment section as well. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Plenty of other Adobe tutorials on the channel. Plenty more to come as well. And if you want to check out my most recent video, you can click the annotation here. If you want to check out a similar video to this one, click the annotation here. If you want to subscribe to my other channels or this one, click the annotation here. And if you want to donate a dollar to my Patreon page, you can click the annotation here. That's pretty much it, guys. Thank you for watching as always. And this is GS Malice Smart, and I'll be back sooner than you think. Don't go anywhere.